break. We're on camera. Like, we don't get on camera all, all that often. It's like Hollywood. Oh, right now. so like we're in Hollywood. No. Don't. Don't do that. It's Daria, and uh, mm-hmm. I'm here with this one. Spotted Menace, yes, yes. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Okay, so this is our first time on camera. Nope, not our first time. Our well, first time. it is, yeah, because we did Pokemon mm-hmm. and then... Avengers Endgame. Oh, Avengers so, Endgame. Third time. Third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. Now we're doing Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So, you want to... It. Want me to hit, uh, hit the intro? Music! Intro. Mm-hmm. Yeah! Okay, let me hit the intro. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go, let's all go, let's, let's, let's all go to the <laughs> Town. I can all change like that. Hey! You're Rick fucking Dalton. Don't you forget it. What's up, guys? We are back doing another review. We got Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yay. Quentin Yay. Tarantino flick. Now, full oh, disclosure, full Lord. disclosure, full disclosure, full disclosure, was not looking forward to this movie. At all. I not, not am bit. going to have to agree. I mean, I am a huge fan of Quentin Tarantino, but sometimes or lately, he's been like a little bit off much. the rails. He's been a little bit much. Just a little, just a little bit just much. A little bit so much. I actually was coming into this movie like half. Uh, I don't even know how to explain it. I just. Half. He started something. So I, I, I don't know because like, I don't even know how to explain it. I just came in half, halfway. Halfway. Of expecting something. Halfway. And that's I don't know why, but that's just that's how I went into say. it. Yeah. I'm going to say halfway. Halfway of All right. something. Anyway, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood takes place in Hollywood, 1969. Yeah. Following the tale of one uh, Rick Dalton, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, who, oh my God, he does an amazing job. I... I'm not the biggest Leo fan. I'm not the biggest. You see me because I'm sweating right now. So you're I'm, really I'm, not. I'm, 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 a, I'm a little hot. I'm a little hot on the call with me. Dab, dab. How, okay, but dab. how Check are you dad. not the Check biggest Leo fan? <laughs> I, I didn't say I wasn't the biggest Leo fan. I just like okay, I did just say that. Yeah, you did. I, I, I call myself a liar on the camera. Uh, it is on camera now. They heard uh, you. I'm not the biggest Leo fan. Doesn't mean I don't mm-hmm. like him. I just you know. He doesn't resonate with me as a as a as an actor as much. Uh, like when when somebody's like, "Oh man, it's a Leo flick," I'll be like, "Okay, mm-hmm. cool." Uh, but I he's been putting out some good movies. I'm not though. saying he hasn't. It's just like I'm okay. not I'm not elated about seeing many Leo flicks. Okay. This one this one surprised me. Leo Leo kicked Leo kicked some ass in this one. Like like just just from a general standpoint, like he was amazing to the point where I completely got lost in him. I believed he was just a rigged on. I, I, I thought I was watching a freaking biography uh, of this fictional character, Rick Dalton. Yeah. Uh, and he is uh, playing alongside his good friend, Cliff Booth, played by Brad Pitt. Again, not the biggest Pitt fan, but holy crap, these, this duo has some chemistry. They had some really good chemistry. It was yeah. actually... Um... It was actually exciting to see them both on camera. Although I wasn't surprised because good thing about Quentin, he loves to keep his best wow. actresses and actors and a lot of his flicks. Yeah. Which is, again, what makes him a good director and producer. Well, I don't know if that makes him a good one. Well, to me, in my opinion, I think so. But yeah. Kind of like Adam Sandler, how he keeps the same okay. people. I'm gonna make it aside real quick. I'm okay. Aside. I love the fact that that we got Margot Robbie in here, who again, awesome. Oh yeah, and Sharon Tate. Yeah. Like Sharon Tate. Yeah. We got Margot Robbie in this, and there is literally an actress whose name is get this Harley Quinn Smith. <gasps> yeah. That is. Uh, that, yeah, I, 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 I caught that. that. I just caught that. I just caught that, with that you. was kind of funny with me. Yeah, like but, Harley but continue, Quinn. Continue. I'm sorry. But yeah. Right. Um. <laughs> But yeah, that's to me, in my opinion, that's what makes me 
like a lot of his films. Because there's a little bit of familiarity. Yeah, because, yeah, cast. with the cast, with the characters. Yeah, you don't and have it's to worry easy. about balancing the. No, uh, you know, no. And it's easy chemistry. to distinguish them from each picture because Brad Pitt, of course, played in Glorious Bastards, which again was another Quentin film. And, and oh he God, was completely God. opposite of what he played in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. It was a complete opposite. So that's another thing I like. But it's yeah. like I can distinguish the two. Although he played in his film before, I distinguish the two. Sorry. Okay. I don't know. That was my bad. I hopped in a little half cock. See, that's when you throw a half in and you finish it up with something. So it's just a half cock. It's something else I really want to say. I'm not going to say it because we're on camera. Okay. I'm a fine, sweet fine, girl. Fine, whatever. Fine, 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 fine. But yes, we're following Leo, Leo's character, Rick Dalton. Uh, uh, not a washed up actor, but an actor that's a little bit past his prime. Uh, and his good friend, his his stunt double, uh, Cliff Booth, played by Brad Pitt. Yes. Uh, and really, it's just following the, uh, it's just kind of following the life and times of this. And I was not expecting this movie to be as charming as it was. It's very charming. Yeah. So, side note, another thing, because okay. of, uh, if you don't know, Hollywood, 1969, if I'm not mistaken, it was Golden Years. Was that the, what's the movie? I think it was part of the Golden Years. I think so. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, at, at the very least, yeah. if it wasn't the Golden Years... So, of course, uh, during that time, you know, once actors and actresses reach a certain age. Yeah. Yeah. They kept yeah, playing. So. And that's what he troped on because that's, he kept playing the same roles. Yeah. Uh, Rick Dalton in this movie uh, yeah. was was playing. He was he was he was on the twilight of his career where he's playing a lot of the uh, baddies of the of the episode of when, when it came to and, like yeah, yeah. westerns and like sci fi picks and and spy flicks and that's the only work that he could really get. He was yeah. going to be playing the 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 guest starring role of, of everyone. Like y- y- y'all y'all seen the Love Boat where it's like every, you have your basic cast and yeah. Like, Every week, new guest star, and but they're always like on the downtrend of their career. Yeah, when they when they show up, and that's basically what what he's playing uh, in this, and it really plays up to the fact that Hollywood is basically a character uh, in this. Uh, the way that he, sh- or the way that Quentin Tarantino shoots uh, this whole movie is brilliantly done. I, not a single shot seems out of place. It it feels lively. It feels vibrant. It just feels colorful and it plays it like it's its own character yeah that's that's another thing i meant to point out because a lot of his movies are either beige red black you know just kind of more of a like uh batman and superman and (laughs) just just monochromatic yeah (laughs) those people yeah but yeah. yeah so this film again was refreshing because this time we had we had color, we had blue, we had white, we had green. Just we so, had just the whole sunlight. palette. Yeah. Just the whole palette. Yeah. Uh, the, another thing I want to touch upon is the music in this is uh, oh, so great. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's not just the music, it's the radio stations that play along with the music that, that really just kind of completes everything in this film. It just adds like that little bit of extra flavor that yeah. makes it work. Uh, it comes in a little long, like over two and a half hours. Like, am, am I right? Is that uh, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it's yeah, like two, two hours, hours and 39 minutes. minutes. Almost yeah. a three hour flick. Yeah. And there are parts in this movie where it feels like a three hour movie. It is, but it's, again, it still isn't that bad because he kept throwing things in that by the time you felt like, okay, this is really long, you forget about it because it's like, okay, something else just happened that you're just like, what the hell? Yeah, this movie had a chance to be incredibly dry and just like, just just by the numbers. But like he throws in flashbacks, he throws in little asides, he throws in like these little, you know, quips or like scenes that are quips that are just like absolutely perfect and just like having a break from what you're seeing right now without completely digressing from the film. Right. Yeah, and like, yeah. so far, every time that it started feeling like it was starting to drag, you started to feel that runtime hit you, you get hit with, Phew, here's another side scene yeah. that happens, and it really makes you uh, uh, makes you feel for the characters, makes you feel for, for the atmosphere, makes you feel for the setting that you're in. And it's, you know, it's great. I was, again, I was not expecting it to be this well no. done. Um, no. But as I said, that runtime is a little bit it's much. It's long. It's long. Is and I must say, much. again, for it to be Quentin Tarantino, you know, how he loves his gore and glory. Okay, pause. Okay. Um, pause. So remember how I said this movie was charming? Yeah. It was warm. It was like very brilliantly acted and yeah. paced. It's just like, mm, yeah. great. 
the final five to seven minutes of this film, you get it was like, yes. oh, by the way, y'all thought this wasn't a Quentin Tarantino movie? <laughs> it's a Quentin Baby. Tarantino film. Baby! Yeah. Because yeah. even us uh, sitting in the movie theater, we're kind of just going through the movie. We get close to the end. You're just kind of like... Are we sure this is a Squid Tarantino movie? Because yeah, like <laughs> I know the shots and you know you know his signature, yeah. so I picked up on them. But you know I was like, okay, it's missing something. And then like the last ending of the movie was like everybody is like, yeah, there's Quentin Tarantino right yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> you, you start feeling this yeah. ominous feeling as the movie starts winding down, yeah. bit by bit by bit, but. Like, you don't know where it's going. Yeah. And that's another thing. It keeps you doing that through the whole movie. Oh, yeah. There are so many spots where they... You're just like, oh, they, they I know something is going to come. I know something... Because usually he's so good at throwing something yeah. in out of nowhere. Yeah. And, and he, he, and he has waiting. you on the seat yeah. on a lot of these scenes. Yeah. And it all comes together towards the end where you're just like... There's a sense of unease. Yeah. It's, it's well done. I, I'm going to have to just say throughout the whole movie, you're not going to have an easy feeling. Yeah. There's, there's, there's <laughs> you're gonna, just going to feel like, you're gonna hit, oh You're going to get hit with like, like, okay, this is a brilliant shot. Yeah. I love the music. I love the atmosphere. Everybody's having fun yeah. and enjoying themselves. What's going on? Right. I know what's, some what's, issues getting ready to happen. I know something. Something. Happen. something. Music, music changed. I, I feel the tension. Yeah. Oh we're, like, oh, we're back to we're back to yeah. the fun times and the light times and everything. Yeah, it's awesome. And then five minutes later, you're back. You're just like, Jesus Christ, dude, what? <laughs> like, just get to it, damn it! And you get lulled into a false sense yeah. of security, and then like right towards the end, it's like, yeah, yeah there you go. Tarantino. Yeah, this, 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 this it comes Quentin back. Tarantino. It comes back. Okay, so uh, on camera, let's let's go ahead and do this. Let's, let's hit our scores. Go for it, D. Hit me. Hit me some yours I'm first. giving this a solid four. A solid four. I enjoyed those, those this. Folks be like, solid four. Yeah, solid four. Yes. Uh, but I'm giving it a solid four. What would you give it? This is so close to being a perfect movie. It, it is was. so close. It was like, just long. And I'm this, thinking that what took a star off. Yeah, because like, yeah. like, this is my favorite Quentin Tarantino movie. And I like me. I, the only one that I think I haven't seen is... Uh, uh, Django Unchained. I just couldn't get through that one, so I, I didn't. I didn't see. It. But like everything else, yeah. like every other Quentin Tarantino movie, I've enjoyed in some respect. This is my favorite by far because of how warm and welcoming it is. Yeah. Even though they're still playing on the tropes, uh, and some of them very racist and tropes. But that's like it's the 1960s. It's right. First of all, I give you. I give you a yeah. uh, not a thumbs up. I put it on the side. Not a single N word in this one. No. Then again, ain't a single black person in this one. So uh, no, no, that's not saying. true. That's not true. It was quite a few. It was quite a few. Anyone with speaking roles. Even it might not have exactly. been exactly. Exactly. But moving it was still on, quite a few. And moving on. He actually put a lot moving of them in the Playboy on. Mansion. If you paid attention, I to paid that. attention. Yeah, and not one of them did this. Not a one. Okay. So we're gonna move on. Yes, we're gonna but move it, on. It did have a couple of racial, but it went more towards. The Hispanics and Native Americans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's that's that's. I'm, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put that on a little. Yeah. Spot, you know, CW all that. Yeah. Stuff. But um, what's keeping this from being a perfect movie for me is just that runtime. It's it, you feel it. You feel it in some some scenes where it's like there's a fine line between providing atmosphere and letting you live in the moment and just lingering mm -hmm. and a lot of times he told that line so much to the point where i'm looking at my watch as again beautiful movie i absolutely loved it but i'm still looking at my watch like okay so when is this about to start wrapping up because by the time you get to that final you know few scenes of this movie it doesn't feel like it's about to wrap up and you're worried that it's just going to rush its way through uh, to the climax. That's and that's, that's, that's one of the biggest issues with this is you start to worry, you're starting to feel rushed. And that, that final bit is saved by it being so outlandish compared to the rest of the movie yeah. that you're laughing through all of it if you're able to actually watch all of it. Yeah. But um, it's close to a perfect movie. I give it, you know, an easy, solid, solid ass for it. Yeah. This, yeah. this is, this is I, I don't know if I'll put it on my must watch list. I would. Uh, at least not watching the theaters. Like if you if you, uh, if you see it on DVD, go ahead yeah, and grab it. But it, I, I mean, if anything, I if someone asks me, I probably would go back yeah, and watch yeah, it again. I probably watch it again. I probably watch it again. Um, yeah, Quentin, 
by the way, the only the only other way that I, I know that, that this is this is you. Yeah. Only other way that I know this is you, the gratuitous damn foot shots. Bruh. Well. Bruh. Again. Seriously. You see a lot of his signatures until the end. Another thing I must point out with this movie, which is not necessarily a spoiler, I liked how he played down Charles Manson and the ranch. Yeah. I'm just going to leave it there because I, yeah, I, I, I yeah. can't, we can't say no more yeah, about I don't want to say any details more about, more about that, but if you watched the movie, I think you would actually appreciate yeah, that too. Yeah, like halfway through the movie, you kind of you kind of figure out where it's going to go. Yeah. You kind of yeah. figure out where it's going to go, but it's 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 not it's not yeah. uh, telegraphed. No. It's not telegraphed. No. If, but like, you know, who But you get the gist when you see it in the trailer and then, yeah. All that, all so, that. yeah. Okay, so this is the first actual scheduled on screen one, you, you you feeling good? Yeah, you we can like do it? another one. Yeah, we'll do another one. Yep. All right then. Until then, cut you out. <laughs>